Ethiopia, the second largest populated country in Africa, faces civil war. The war is between the Addis Ababa central government and Tigra regional government. In this video, we will explain why Ethiopia fi is fighting with itself and its geopolitical impact on the world politics. If we want to know the cause of this civil war, we have to go back in the history. The Ethiopian Empire is one of the few places in Africa that escaped from the European colonization. Ethiopia was invading and absorbing the neighboring country to protect the central empire from European force. As a result, the country became a very diverse country with dozens of ethnic cities. But it was ruled by the Orhama peoples. All other ethnic groups were treated like the second class citizen. After the World War II, the Ethiopian Empire absorbed the formal European colony of Eritrea. As a result, that was the formation of militia whose goal was the independence from the Eritrea. Then in 1977, a communist dictator, the Colonel Mingastu, the rose to the power. After that, Mingastu launched a bloody military campaign called the Red Terror, killing thousands that opposed him. By this time, other militia has had formed. The one of them was the Tigre People's Liberation Front or TPLF. The militaries began to work together, especially in the north. This alliance made this region strong enough to resize Mingust army. Mingastu responds by killing civilians in Tigra and Eritrea and even preventing the international famine aid from reaching the region. Over 1 million Ethiopia die during his region. But by the late 1980s, the TPLF and EPLF had built up the militias with thousands of fighters. And in 1991, both groups formed a coalition with other militia and successfully overthrew the Mingastu government. Only a few days later, the Eritrea declared the independence from Ethiopia and it left the TPLF as most powerful force in the country. The leader of TPLF, the Mele Zinawil, became the first Prime Minister of Federal Democratic Republic of Ethiopia. In an attempt to balance power among its ethnic group, the Zinawil made a political system into a kind of democracy in which many of militias who had overthrown the previous regime became political parties, including TPLF. He divided Ethiopia into 10 ethnic based regional states. The TPLF only represent about 5% of Ethiopia's population, but in Zinawil's new government, it formed a coalition with allies representing the most populous region. It guaranteed that election would always come out in the TPLF's favor, but just a few years after Zinawil took power, he went to a war with Eritrea along its border with Tigra. This war served the relationship between two countries for decades. Zinawil political system also did nothing to stop the violence between ethnic groups throughout the country. Zinawil died in 2012, but TPLF remained in power. In 2015 election, TPLF won by cheating. It led massive protest across the country. More and more Ethiopians saw the TPLF government as corrupt. And finally, in 2018, the government selected a new prime minister from one of the Ethiopia's historically oppressed group, Oroma, who had advocated for peace and unify for the country. The man was Dr. Abi Ahmed.
but Abis agenda put him in conflict with TPLF. One of the Abis first major act as Prime Minister was to repair relationship with Eritrea, which was now an enemy of TPLF. He also began to remove grouped TPLF officers from power. It was supposed to held Tigras regional election in August 2020. This election was an opportunity for TPL to start rebuilding their power. Then, Abby postponed those elections because of pandemic. As a result, the TPLF decided they would no longer in Abby's government and they will fight for their independence from Ethiopia.